I just showed you how to use um, the regular foliage tool that can, um, comes with Clip Studio Paint. And I'm going to show you how to use a few of my um, custom brushes that I sell on Gumroad. I'm going to start with the rough hatch foliage, which is just some variable hatching. Let's see. I'm going to start with a large brush size again so we get a nice. Um, random spread. Then bring it down. I think I might up my particle size a bit. Again, we're considering our light source. I'm going from this direction again just to keep it simple. When you're using just like a hatching brush for a tree, it gives it a more soft feathery look. And the more variety you have um, for your trees in general look will make them seem more believable. Because not all trees have the same type of leaves. Alright, so I have my rough shape again. I'm going to uh, start with the outline around the highlight area. This time I'm probably going to use the mapping pen. And I'll zoom in a little bit. My mapping pen is set up so it's a little finer than my G pen. And because the hatching is finer, it just, I think, looks better. Sometimes you might have something that uh, goes way out of line that you want to get rid of, like this thing. I don't want to work with it, so I'm just going to delete it, or erase it rather, <laughs> which is deleting it technically. So here I'm starting to get the uh, the definition of the, the side of the tree with the highlight. I'm going to go back to my foliage hatching and Add in a little shadow here and there. Alright. I think I'm ready to add the tree trunk, I think. I'm gonna do the use the G pen for this one though, because I it's just easier and faster. Oops. Also, if you want to do your tree trunks on a separate layer, you can if you aren't real confident about your placement. And then don't be afraid to just erase half of it, too. It doesn't really matter. Another thing to do is add a little detail, adding a few branches, because in reality, when you look at a tree, you are going to see little random branches peeking out here and there amongst the foliage. Alright, I'm going to switch to the calligraphy tool again. I'm going to use a smaller brush size than I used on the last one.
just kind of adding a few individual leaf strokes in black it kind of gives it a little bit of contrast because the the foliage the hatching foliage brush is uh, pretty wispy so it can give you a little more of a defined edge a little more hard contrast basically I'm never really very perfect at exacting about this because I have to work really fast on the comic pages otherwise it's not going to get done it just needs to look like a nice convincing tree it doesn't need to be a perfect masterpiece So I think this is starting to look pretty good, especially if you don't want the tree to stand out too much in the background. Um, so I would probably leave this one here, but if you did want it to be stronger, you could um, go and bring in the foliage hatching tool and add add some darker shadows, and then for depth you want to add a little more light on top of that. So you can make it a stronger tree. Um, another thing you can do as a trick to soften a tree if you really want it to just kind of be a hint in the background is you can go over here and, well I've made my own um, hatching eraser. I've got a cross hatch eraser and a, and a line hatch eraser that works like the ribbon tool. Um, you can make these tools yourself really easily you can go through, well maybe not like that, but you can go through with the uh, probably the line hatch eraser and just kind of gently scuff over things like you're kind of scraping scraping tone and that kind of softens things up a bit that's a possibility but I don't want that in this alright so that was the um, the rough hatch foliage brush. I'm gonna show, go ahead and show you on the same one um, the upright foliage. I'm gonna go ahead and use the light one. Um, well, you need it on black. This one's good for um, like evergreens and low-lying shrubs. It has a very upright feel about it. So it kind of looks like a couple of little evergreens here. Well, the start of them anyway. Um, you want to give them a little more form. So I'd take down the size of the brush a little bit, give them a little more depth. Darkening this one makes it retreat into um, behind this one and brings this one out more. So there you have kind of a random evergreen shrub. You can also use um, these tools to create other trees. I'll do this on another layer. Let's see, let's use the dark one.
So the upright foliage kind of just creates a more sparse sort of tree. Let me move it. And then if you use these, oops, wrong one. If you use these in the background, you can just erase where you want your foreground tree to be. So there you can kind of put a tree in the background. You can also use these brushes with tone. I'll go ahead and show you that. I'll need to start a new layer though. I'm going to use 25%. Uh, So when I'm working with tone, I generally like to do the tree trunks first and get an idea of where they're going to lay. Because I usually use um, tone trees for the background behind, behind the, um, the main trees. Basically, when you're making a tone tree, you're just kind of, because it's not hard contrast like the main tree, the, the first tree that I did, it fades off into the distance better, so if you wanted to make a forest and have a little more differentiation between your trees, it's easier. So that's pretty much it, how I make um, trees using my foliage brushes and the Manga Studio brushes. It really is um, just a freeform sort of thing. You should look at a lot of trees, a lot of pictures of trees. I mean, go ahead and reference them because every tree is different. It doesn't matter if you reference a tree even wholly. Um, I'll also um, put some resources in the links. There's a really good book on how to use pen and ink and render trees and other things by um, oops, Arthur Gupta. So I'll put a link to that book in the in the description. <laughs> so that about does it. Um, you can also use all the Clip Studio um, foliage brushes for color. But I think I'll save that for another video. Thank you for watching.